we're gonna be doing a little Kimex tutorial. Yep, doing that. Doing that today. First things first, you're gonna need a Kimex. You can get this at Bed Bath & Beyond. You can get it from Amazon. You can probably buy a thousand of them from Alibaba. You're going to need a little scale. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just anything that measures grams or ounces, whatever unit of measurement you want to use. You're gonna need Chemex filters right here. These are kind of what they look like, little white filters that basically folds open, you stick them in like yay. You're gonna need coffee. You're gonna need a kettle. You're gonna need a grinder if you're using whole bean coffee. And below, I'll shoot links to where you can get everything, including coffee. <laughs> Period here. I'm actually drinking a little water right now because I'm about to make coffee. See, we're doing a Chemex tutorial today. I'm gonna show you how to make some bomb coffee out of the Chemex. A little different attire today. I'm trying to be a little bit more professional. We're doing something a little bit more prestigious and professional, so I figured I'd try to match the part. I'm here at my wife's little studio. She's a wedding photographer, so none of this is mine. I don't even really know how to use half of it. All right, guys, first things first. If you get on the internet, there's going to be about a hundred different measurements and ratios for Chemex coffee. This is mine. You can go less, you can go more. You can do whatever you want in between, but this is what I do. I do 30 grams of coffee to 480 grams of water. That's just me. That's what I like. So anyway, first off, I pour my 30 grams of coffee. Whatever, close enough. And then what you want to do is throw it in your grinder. Boom, just like that. Thank you. Next thing is just smelling the coffee. Mm -hmm. Next thing you want to do is you want to pop out one of these little filters. Now these filters come in a square. There's like four little tabs. What you want to do is you want to pull one tab out, the little pocket, basically just like a little duck bill. Mwah, mwah, mwah. That's funny. Real quick, we're going to go ahead and heat our water up, which I already kind of preheated it, so, you know, save us a little time, save us a little time. Personally, and this is just me, you don't have to do this, but what I do is I put a little bit in there to wet the rim. Wet the rim? I always have like a trash cup. Put excess water in, stuff like that. So if you're by a sink, dump it in the sink. You know what I mean? Then you're gonna take your little filter. You wanna line the three sides up with the little funnel portion of it. The little canal, I call it the canal. I don't know what it's really called, but I call it the canal. So you put it in there like that. The reason we wetted the sides of the rim is because now it's gonna stick in there real good. Because if you don't wet the sides of it, it just has a tendency to not sit in there really good. So now we got the, the Chemex paper just flat, completely flat against the Chemex base. What I do is I put a little water in there to get rid of that paper taste because like nobody likes paper taste. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let that drain out. Get the little trash cup that I was telling you about. Pour it out like yeah. Set your scale to zero. I always like doing this. Just, just like a little double check, you know? Not that it really matters, but 30 grams. And once you get your coffee in there, you reset it again. Back down to zero. What I do is I usually bring the boil back up one more time. I I usually do right around 200 or below, 195, 200. Usually once the water cuts off, if you give it a few seconds to where you don't hear it anymore, once you start pouring and all that, you're pretty much good on temperature. Just depends on what you want. And then we'll go ahead and start pouring. So for the bloom, so I usually pour in about 80 grams, 80 to 90 grams is enough to cover the grounds and get everything kind of soaked up real good. And then you'll kind of see the bloom if you got fresh coffee. If you don't have fresh coffee, you ain't gonna see no bloom. It's just gonna be like flat. I'll show you kind of example of that. This is flat coffee, and then this is like old stale coffee, and then this is actually like fresh coffee that I roasted a week ago. Um, you can time it if you want, maybe 15, 20 seconds. Wait for the balloon, kind of let everything soak in real good, and then go ahead and on with initial pour. Now, a lot of people will do like two or three different times, but I kind of just go in there, do little small circles. I pour slow, I pour at a slower pace, and also barely get the edges where I don't go up onto the white paper, but I am hitting the coffee around there. But I don't pour on the white edges and I'll show you why in just a second. Continuously pour, continuously pour until I get to 480. Keep on pouring. 
480. Now let it sit for about 15 seconds. So this 15 seconds, you see everything is kind of settling back down from the pour. And so what I do at this point is once I get about 15, 20 seconds into it, I usually take it off the scale and then I'll give it a little, 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 little twirl. Nothing crazy. It ain't got to be nothing crazy. Just, you saw that. Just a little bit. Just a tad bit. Just give it that swirl. I'll let it go down a little bit more and I'll usually swirl it just once more. Just tiny bit. Tiny, tiny bit. That's going to give you a good flat bottom in your Chemex. If you don't, you'll see at the end of your Chemex that there's like this little tunnel that basically all your coffee's got stuck to the side and stuff like that. Again, I'll do a little quick, just a little quick roundy roux. And then that's basically getting all the coffee back down instead of just sitting up on the side of the paper, it's getting it pushed back down to the bottom of the Chemex, which therefore the coffee can filter through. Now real quick, if you got fine coffee, you put it on like an espresso grind or something, that espresso grind, the powder and stuff from the coffee is going to fill all the paper pores and it's really going to clog up. And then if you go to super coarse, it'll just filter through really quick. So depending on how you like your coffee, you may want to go a little bit more coarse or you may want to go a little bit more fine depending on the strength that you want your coffee to be. That's it. And that's pretty much it. So once you get there, coffee quits dripping, you just, uh, there's a garbage can there. And then this is where the magic happens. I'm talking about the money. So you take your cup, preferably a Cedarota cup, if you want, and you do the pour. I usually put it on the side, kind of like you're pouring beer, gives it that little twirl in there. That's what I'm talking about. That's not bad. That is not bad. And that's how you make Chemex coffee, guys. Truly hope y'all enjoyed it. Really do. If y'all have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I really do try to answer any of them that I can. And uh, like I said, if I can't, I'll look it up. Uh, let's see here. So first off, first off, we got to do an intro. We got to do some items needed. A Chemex filter scale. Got all that. Coffee, hot water, the cup. B-roll shots. That's what we're going to be doing. Some links to the description. The process. Go through it. Drink some coffee. And somehow.